Thank you. So I speak here as the um, as the rapporteur on the opinion on the cult committee. Um, so I come at it from the education angle, but you know, given my interest in science and technology and, and industry and so on, um, I also have ETRE uh, ambitions in mind. So um, I have a few points. My first concerns the level of ambition as written in the legislation. And I would like to say I found the legislation extremely concerning when I first read it. Um, because it doesn't lay out much ambition and it barely mentions science and technology at all. But um, having talked with the, um, spoken with the commission and with the director of the EIT, I'm reassured that the quality of the work that is going on in many areas is good. And what I'd like to do is to see more of that written into the legislation and we will be working on that. Um, without invention, there is, uh, there's nothing to innovate. So I do see that this, that technical education is critical to the continuance of the EIT. And we must remember, this is an institute of innovation and technology. Um, we're not just selling ideas, we're selling products, and we're selling ideas which can be used in daily life. Um, thinking about the spread and the widening, which is absolutely critical to this, we need to have the EIT serving all member states, or as many as possible. But we do need to acknowledge the need for high education, high ambition, I mean, and high standards. They are also valid. And with that in mind, I would say we need to be front-loading education into the IRS members, where we have uh, percentages of the budget to spend in the IRS. I would say we need to be encouraging technical education and entrepreneurial education in the um, RAS states. And once we can, once, you know, People are just as bright in Romania as they are in the UK and Germany. It's just they haven't had the years and years and years, the establishment of the education system. And that's what we need to be providing and, edu and um, encouraging. With that in mind, I would turn to funding. And the new funding model seems very reasonable. And like everyone, I have a, a slight concern that the early models weren't guided well and they don't seem to be fully succeeding. But I ask everyone never to forget that at least 30% of the responsibility of the EIT and every kick is education. And education should never be driven as a profit-making activity. So for all we want every kick to be making money and to become self-financing, we do have to work out how we can tally that with the need for quality education and quality research. Um, and research itself isn't always, uh, doesn't always make money until the innovators get their hands on it. So um, we need to be cautious in our demands for continual profit making and independence. Um, on the question of openness, I agree, this should not be a closed shop. And this links directly to the question of visibility and the fact that before I arrived in Parliament and was given this file, I had never heard of the EIT. I've worked as a science journalist for more than 30 years in Britain and not one piece of research from the EIT had crossed my desk. This horrified me. Especially, it horrifies me in a different way now because I know the quality of the research that's coming out, but the publicity and the, the visibility is appalling. And I think we all need to look at the budget line for that. Um, for the general public, that will help with the push towards openness because people aren't going to apply for funds from a, 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 an organization that they've never heard of. They need to know it exists before they can apply to take part in our schemes. Um, equally, in Parliament, if the EIT wants to keep our support, then they need to be um, coming and giving us hearings. And I would propose that ETRE request at least one hearing from one kick, and research is in that kick every year. And I put that to members of ETRE to consider. Finally, we come to the CULT um, proposal, or the proposal for a CCI kick. And I won't say much here, but we mustn't forget this is a technical institute and an innovation institute. And we mustn't forget that most of the uh, revenue from cultural and creative industries these days comes from movies and video games and streaming um, services. And all of those require technical innovation and we should be working on that in the EU. We need to be, I mean, the UK has their Harry Potter movie facilities, you know, Shepherd and they are amazing. 
we could have one of those in Slovenia or Romania. Um, we should be looking at expanding the video games industry. It is a massive earner. In the UK, it earns 10 times as much as the fishing industry, um, but it doesn't have its own committee anywhere. Um, and I propose that, or I would suggest that this could be the same for the rest of Europe. So um, if anybody has any questions about the cultural and creative kick, please come to me. But otherwise, I'm delighted to hear everyone's views and thank you for taking the time to get involved. Thank you so much. Uh, if there are